the last topic in our recap of concepts for memory corruption and vulnerabilities is the notion of a buffer and we're also going to talk about the basics of a simple buffer overflow. So really a buffer is just a finite contiguous allocated block of memory. What does that mean? It's just a, a series of bytes in memory that are sort of treated as one object, so to speak. So an example of this would be like a fixed size array, like a string in C, for example, or an array of 10 integers. Um, it's sort of fixed in size and we can populate it with elements and that's it. Just think of it as an array. It's the easiest um, analogy. A lot of languages will not let you access elements beyond the boundaries of the array. So things before element zero or things after element X, where X is the size of the array. However, C is not like that. C will actually let you access an array at index, index negative one. Or if our array has uh, 10 elements, we'd actually be able to access elements at index 10, 11, 12, 13. C is fine with letting you read and actually write beyond the boundaries of your array. However, doing so results in undefined behavior. You may have seen that programs crash. Sometimes they run fine, but other times they will crash when this happens. Because since we can write beyond the boundaries of an array, we can start writing to adjacent areas in memory. And as you might recall from our discussion of stacks and stack frames, the structure and organization of the stack is very carefully managed, like where we store local variables. And we know that beneath the local variables, there's other important architectural elements like previously saved bottoms of other stack frames, there's return addresses, there's parameters, there's other stack frames lower down. So if we're allowed to write very far past the end of an array, we can potentially corrupt data in the stack. Right? Um, and that's sort of the challenge with C is that there's, since there's no built-in bounds checking, this behavior can just kind of occur. Right? So really a buffer overflow is an attempt to write data past the boundary of a buffer. Um, typically, you know, corrupting the current stack frame and maybe even corrupting other stack frames or adjacent contents in memory. So we could, you know, overflow a buffer and actually maybe just populate some other local variables or change their values. The goal, though, of a more malicious buffer overflow rather than just crash crashing a program is to override or replace one of the specific values in the stack that we talked about earlier. If you recall, one of the things in a stack frame is the return address back to the calling function's next instruction. If an attacker is really careful, they can insert a crafted value over top of that return address by overflowing a buffer, writing a bunch of data in, and then replacing that return address with the address of an instruction that they want to execute. Okay, so it's basically like redirecting the flow of control of a program by saying, no, don't return to main, return to this other function over here um, that I'm sort of pointing at. If that happens, the attacker effectively controls the execution of the program for like a, a cycle or a clock tick or one instruction execution, if you want to call it that. And oftentimes that's enough for them to gain control of the entire process moving forward. Um, there are even some situations when we'll see some of these where the attacker, attacker can actually introduce new code into a program that doesn't already exist. So introduce new functions and they can use this concept of a corrupted return address to execute that new code. So we're going to do a demo right now of a very simple uh, overflow um, before we get into more advanced memory corruption uh, exploits and, and how they work. The last demo we're going to look at for this section is um, the concept of a buffer and a simple overflow of a buffer that just causes a seg fault because it's got too much data in it and we corrupt some part of the stack. Okay, so we're going to keep working with our program that we've been using. So I'm going to say gdb simple.out um, and a break on the get name function um, because that's where we have a fixed size array or a fixed size buffer. I think the, um, the source code um, showed us that it was, uh, I think, 10 bytes. Actually, we can confirm that. Let's check. Um, read, oh, read name uh, has a buffer that's name length, uh, number of elements, 
and that's 10, right? So basically we have a 10 character array in read name that our program's gonna use. Okay, so we're gonna break on read name and run our program. All right, so now we are in the read name function. The first thing it tries to do is zero out the array. Okay, so um, if we take a step and run that, um, actually the mem set, call the mem set is actually down here. Um, so we'll, we'll jump forward to there, actually right after mem set, then we should see sort of a zeroed out um, array on our stack. Um, because since the variable, since this string is a local variable, we should see a bunch of zeros in our stack. Okay. Uh, a couple other things actually we should record right now uh, that we are inside this function is the the contents of the stack frame so far. Right. We could say frame, and that's actually going to give us some of those values. Um, but it's a good exercise for us right now to actually look at the contents of the stack. Okay. So let's examine the bottom of the stack frame, or let's examine the contents of the stack right now. So if uh, we were to disassemble main first, we wanna know where read name uh, returns to. So we're gonna look for this address. So here's our call to read name. And so we should see this as our return address in the stack, okay? So if we say x, uh, print me you know, a bunch of values from ESP right now, uh, here, we see that value. So the description is return um, address to main. And where does it live? It lives at FFFFD59C. Okay, because that's the address and the contents. Okay, we also see um, above that, this should be the bottom of main's stack frame right here. Uh, we know that from our previous demos. And it lives at 59C minus uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. So C, um, B, A, 9, 8. Oops. Good, um, so we're gonna continue executing our program. Um, we're pushing some parameters onto the stack in preparation for a call to memset. We don't need to worry about those. Uh, for now, we're actually gonna go right down to the part where we read the name variable. Actually, uh, we'll break right after the call to memset. So we called memset um, and that zeroed out the name array. So actually, if we look at the stack right now, we should see a whole big uh, region of zeros. Right uh, here. Right, our name array is 10 characters. Um, so we should see a whole, uh, at least 10 um, sequences of zeros in there, um, like 10 zero bytes, and I think we do. Okay, so the next thing to do is to prompt the user to actually um, print their name, and then further down we actually read the name. So let's just see where that is. Uh, this starts around here. One, two, three, four. Uh, we'll just say that it's roughly there. Um, what we can confirm actually, let's run uh, the get string line first just to make sure that we're recording the right address for our buffer. Uh, so we want to jump down to the call to get string or the line right after get string. We'll continue, it says enter the name. So we'll just say Nick. Now if we examine the stack, uh, let's look at a lot of it. So here, um, those, just because I've seen them a lot and I know what they look like, um, those are um, capital N, I, C, and K. Okay, uh, we can confirm that by printing as a character array the contents of 
zero x f f f f d five six zero one two three four five six seven eight. Um, and so for now, that would be the expected execution of this program, right? Now we know that it goes on and it prompts the user for a number and it prints a bunch of Fibonacci stuff, because here we haven't overflowed the bounds of our buffer. We've stayed well within the region of memory that was allocated for our buffer. Okay, if we look, we can see kind of how far away we are from some of these more structural elements of the stack. So if we look down and see where 9.8 is, um, or we look for this value, uh, d5c8, uh, here, d5c8. So we see the distance between the name variable and sort of the bottom value of the stack and the return address to main. So really to corrupt the stack, to force a buffer overflow, we would have to write um, past the boundaries of the array and overwrite all of these values that I'm highlighting here until we eventually overwrite this, the bottom of main stack frame and the return address into main. That's a lot of bytes. If each of these is four bytes, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen times four, which should be what, fifty-six. We'd have to write at least about fifty-six bytes to corrupt all this data and force the sort of termination of the program. So we're gonna restart the program and we're gonna try that. Okay. I'm just going to run the program again. Okay. Uh, actually, yeah. Uh, so we can continue. We'll just continue up until we're prompted for the string. Here we enter our name. Now instead of putting in something that's within the bounds of the program, I'm going to enter a long string. Okay. Um, just so we can keep, kind of keep track of our count, I'm going to use numbers. So I'm going to put like ten ones, ten twos, ten threes. Okay, so this is what we're entering for the name. We know that there should be enough characters here to overflow this value here and override these two values inside of the um, program. Okay, so we've just called um, get string on this. Now let's look at the contents of, this, of the stack. Okay, so we know that somewhere down here at FFFF D598 and D59C, we should see the previous stack bottom and the old return address. If we look at 59, we unfortunately don't see those values. In fact, we actually see these are the um, hex representations of the ASCII characters for one and two and three and four and five and six. So we can see here, um, there's the ones, the twos, the threes, the fours, the fives, the sixes, and they kind of go right up to here. So we have long since written over the return address. So what will happen is we continue to step through the program. Here we're about to leave this function. This is where um, the read name function should start doing things like restoring the old bottom of the stack and, and then moving the return address into the IP register. So if we'll do this slowly. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, leave should basically pop the contents off of the stack into here because we're reconstructing the old um, base pointer. Okay, there, we saw that it popped that value, which is one of our sequences of dig digits, it's actually uh, two fives and two sixes. It popped that into here. So this has now become the bottom of main stack. Well, that's not a valid bottom for main stack. We'll also see in return um, what should end up getting put, what should end up being placed in the IP register is um, sort of the next four digits. So we should see um, IP actually filled with a bunch of 36s. We can confirm that um, just by looking at some values right now off the top of the stack. So if we were about, this is where the return address should live. So it's going to pop this 
into here, and at that point the program should crash because there's probably no instruction at this memory address. There. So we got a seg fault, error while running hook stop, cannot access memory at address 36, 36, 36, 36. So we look at the contents of the IP register. Yes, we actually popped this in here and tried to go there and run code. And that's it. That's a simple um, buffer overflow. It wasn't uh, designed to run code. It just crashed our program because we destroyed the contents of the stack, which is really um, the basic concept of a buffer overflow. What we're going to do next time is see if we can actually craft this value specifically so that it doesn't point to a garbage region of memory. We want to try to point it to actual in regular instructions elsewhere in the program. But that's it for now. Um, if you were to run this on the command line, you can do something similar um, and actually create a core dump. If you uh, remember to run u limit dash c unlimited, and now uh, we're going to feed a bunch of characters into that program to force the crash. Um, I don't like typing out 60 characters every time, so we're going to use a little trick, which is just to have Python print a bunch of characters for us. I'm going to call it Python's print function, and I'm just going to print the character a like a hundred times, and we're going to pipe that into simple dot out. We ran that, so. Um, it read that as our string and printed it back to us, and then it resulted in a segmentation fault, and it gave us a memory dump so we can examine what caused the crash. I can say gdb-q process a core dump file, um, and in the local directory, we can see there's a core dump right here. So gdb-qc core. Program was terminated with a seg fault because it tried to run an instruction at 61, 61, 61, 61, which is the hex code for the character A. So we've been able to automate that overflow by destroying the buffer with too many A's. Okay, and that's it.